This is an iPhone running the old iOS 15, and this is an iPhone running the new iOS 16. Yeah, not much difference that like you can notice. And that's why you need to watch this video to know exactly what has changed because there is quite a bit that has changed. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite upgrades of iOS so far. And I'll tell you why, because there's these little subtle things that, you know, they kind of add up. If you own an iPhone 8 or above, you're gonna be able to download iOS 16. And these are some of the features that actually make a difference to our lives. Number one, the lock screen is much more customizable. There's a very popular saying that goes, show me what your lock screen looks like and I'll show you what you look like. So with the iOS 16, you get many more options to customize your lock screen. All you gotta do is on your lock screen, press and hold until you jump into this menu. From here, you can change the font of the time, the color of the date and time. In fact, you can even use a dropper in order to select the exact color of like the photo or wallpaper that you have on your phone, which is kind of cool. You can now even add widgets finally, so you don't have to unlock your phone in order to check the weather. God forbid you look out the window, right? I mean, who's got time for that? Now, another cool thing that Apple implemented, which we'll get into a little more detail later on is Apple Apple's got this really good masking software now uh, that's built into the whole UI experience. And basically if you were to select like a particular photo or anything like that, it will actually mask out the subject to appear in front of the time. So it kind of just makes your phone look alive, like 3D. But my favorite thing is probably the fact that you can now have multiple lock faces, kind of like Apple Watch faces if you've used the Apple Watch before, and you can switch between them as you so please. So that's kind of cool. So you're probably wondering to see if, why on earth do you have this really creepy wallpaper here? When I got home, my kids were like, we haven't seen you for a while. Let us take you on a spa day. And this was their version of a spa day. I literally had to have that wet napkin on my face for like two hours. But if this video gets 500 likes, I'm gonna make that my profile picture on Twitter and maybe Instagram. Let's see. <laughs> Next is battery life percentage. And yeah, I mean, you're probably thinking, is that a big deal? Yeah, it's a big deal. I love having to see my battery life percentage like actually displayed there up in the corner. You can find that in the settings menu. And uh, yeah, I, I suggest you all turn it on because it's just gonna improve your quality of life that much more. Next up, it has to do with the keyboard. Now you can actually have haptics turned on when you're typing. This is actually really cool. I turned that on instantly as soon as I got it because I used to love this feature on like Android phones and stuff and it really helps me kind of visualize or like know what I'm typing. It helps with that whole typing experience. So I'm glad they finally bought it. One thing is I do hope, wish in the future they'll help you adjust, you know, how strong of a haptic feedback you want when you're typing because right now it's very faint. I actually like it this way, but I know a lot of people would like a little more stronger of a haptic response. So go ahead, try that out. It's pretty cool. Next is a weather app, and this is kind of a good update. It's been missing on Apple for such a long time. You can actually see hourly forecasts for individual days, which I have no idea why this was not possible before, but now it's finally possible. You can drop down and see so many different aspects of the climate, uh, and you can get hourly data uh, for each of these days, so that's pretty good. Next up, updates to iMessage, which we've all been waiting for. Finally, they're here, uh, which is now you can mark messages as unread. This is like a huge, like, <laughs> huge thing that I need. Sometimes you just can't respond to people in that very moment, so it's very helpful to mark it as unread and come back to it later. You can now also unsend messages up to two minutes uh, after you send them. And then if you miss that mark, then up to 15 minutes, you can actually go in and edit your message. But the downside is now they can actually see your initial message. So yeah, try to do it within those two minutes and see if you can get away with it. Next up, notifications. Now this is actually really important because it can definitely impact your mental state, your quality, quality of, uh, you know, your day and everything like that. Because there's been so many times where with iOS 15, I'd pick up my phone and there'd just be a barrage of like notifications and that kind of just, you know, plays with your mind sometimes. I'm one of those people, so I definitely appreciate this update. Now you have three different options for how your notifications are displayed on your lock screen. This first one is called the stacked view and basically they're moved to the bottom and they're kind of stacked. Then you can swipe up and it'll show them in a list called the list view. This is closer to what we had before. Then you have my new favorite, which is called the count view and basically it'll just display all your notifications as a count, as a number down below. You can swipe up when you're ready to deal with that. <laughs> Next up is medication alerts. Now this is actually surprisingly a helpful feature which not a lot of people are talking about because I mean if you're like me and you have to take like allergy meds or something like that, there's sometimes I forget whether I've taken the actual medication. You can set up the details so that it will notify you when you've set it up to take that medication. And then you can just dismiss that notification once you have actually taken it. Next you have live text and photo backgrounds. And this might be one of my favorite updates. I've been literally spamming this ever since <laughs> 
got iOS 16. So what you can do here is now you can go into your photos app and you can select any photo. It doesn't have to be taken with the iPhone. It can be like your professional cameras. It can be any camera, an Android camera. And basically you can go into your photos app and then just tap that photo. And then you'll see like this like little outline around the subject. Now you can press and hold that and you can swipe into another app, share it with somebody else, and it will share just the subject. It'll cut out the background. Or you can even use it for things like Discord stickers, or you can throw it into like a photo editing app and actually use it to mask out your subject for thumbnails and things. So there's endless possibilities and it's actually freakishly good. Like, like this takes me time to do on Photoshop. Apple's doing this in like milliseconds, so. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Another cool thing is previously you could take live text from photos. Now you can even do that with video. So if you were to pause a video or anything, then you can copy whatever is there. Now that is super helpful, especially for plagiarism. Not that I'm condoning that because I, I, I'm not. But like, I mean, if you want to copy anything like code or whatever for your purposes, then this just makes life a lot easier. I copied this entire script from somebody else. Actually, no, I didn't. These are all my thoughts, original. Next up, email. So now you can unsend emails uh, for a certain duration. You can adjust that duration by going to settings and mail. And you can, as soon as you send an email, Apple won't really send it, send it. So you'll have it there to proofread and whatnot. And then you can quickly unsend it. And another helpful thing is now you can schedule emails. This is really helpful if you wanna appear like you're working at 3 a.m. You know what I mean, all you work from home people, just schedule that email to go out at like 2 a.m. Then people think that, oh man, this guy's been working real late. That way you can sleep in the next day and nobody's gonna question. And even when you wake up at like 10.30 or 11 a.m., they're gonna be like, oh, that's fine, man. You've been, you've been working up to like 3.30 a.m., that's great. Yeah, no, that's fine, I'll handle the task. Next up, Face ID. It's these little things in life that really improve the quality of life. Let's say you're watching a YouTube video in the bathroom, I mean, living room, and now your phone is in landscape mode and then accidentally it locks. Now you're like, holy crap, it's locked. I want to get back into my video. Unfortunately, you can't. You have to go into portrait mode, unlock your phone, then the video is in portrait mode. Now you got to twist the phone again. It's just a mess. Now you can unlock your phone with Face ID in landscape mode. These little things in life just makes quality improvement of life so much better. Mix up your live widget view. Damn, try to say that fast. These are basically slightly trimmed down, neater looking widgets. So if you have something playing on YouTube or your music app or anything like that, then it's gonna be nice and trim with just the information that you need. It's not gonna take up like half of your phone screen like it did previously. And also now like things like timer and stuff will have like a widget that are that is running on your lock screen, which we didn't have before. But what still blows my mind is the fact that we can't set multiple timers. You can only still set one timer. Why? Next up, the fitness app is now on your iPhone, which means that you can use Apple Fitness Plus with your actual iPhone. Now, this was previously an exclusive to Apple Watch holders only. Now, you can do it with the iPhone as well. I actually really like Apple Fitness Plus, and I use that pretty much on a daily basis to get in some HIIT workouts. Uh, so I definitely recommend it if you wanna try it out. Next, I wanna talk about focus mode because this is something that has also improved with iOS 16. And if you're not using focus mode, you really should start using it. It's basically like having two different phones or multiple different phones for each aspect of your life. You can basically configure your phone to have a completely different profile, including what apps it shows you, including which people can interact with you. Also like your lock screen and everything, it's all linked now. Next up is dictation, which is probably one of my favorite features from iOS 16. Apple's done a great job with that. And basically it allows you to have a live dictation going. And while you're dictating, you can also type, you can move the cursor around, go to different places, correct words, and it'll even give you corrections while you're speaking and you can change that and your dictation doesn't stop. I really like this continuous dictation model and it's a lot more true to form of what, I mean, dictation should technically look like and makes it a lot more useful for everyday use case scenarios. All right, those are pretty much most of the iOS 16 features that I think that are actually, actually really useful. All of these kind of little things add up to improve quality of life. And I think Apple's done a great job here with iOS 16. Let me know in the comment section down below which one is your favorite iOS 16 feature. Make sure you guys are subbed to my channel. I have a lot more iPhone content coming out. I have a bunch of iPhones ordered, so make sure you guys are up to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, stay blessed, peace.